Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jackson here from Titanic Games. Today we're going to continue our survival game series and we'll be setting up kind of uh, just some basic interaction so that we can test out our inventory just to verify that it works. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is come into our blueprints folder. All right, and we're going to right click and create a new folder called interfaces. Okay. And in this folder, we're going to open it up and right click and create, um, or excuse me, we're going to go down to blueprints and we're going to create a blueprint interface. So we'll call this BPI underscore interact. And we'll open this up. And um, inside of here, we're going to, we have this one function and we're just going to call this uh, interaction. How about, okay. And for right now, that's all we're going to do. We're just going to have a function called interaction. And basically, what an interface allows you to do, for those of you that don't know, is you can add an interface to any class that you want, and then um, you can call a function. And if that class, um, you know, implements the interface, then that function can be, you know, received and then used to implement, you know, whatever kind of behavior you want. Okay. So with that created, we're going to close this. We're going to come into our survival character. So to find that, you just go into Blueprints, Core, Survival Character. And actually before this, let's create a specific button that we'll use for interacting. So we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings. And once it opens up, we're going to come down here to Input, go to Action Mappings, and click to add a new one. If it doesn't show up right away, just click the little drop down. And now in here, we're going to call this uh, Interact. And for my interaction, I'm going to choose the F key. You can choose whatever key you want, of course, um, but we'll just go with F for right now. Okay. Now back in our survival character, we're going to find some open space, and we're going to right-click and type interact. Okay, so we're going to get this input action event interact. So it should look something like this right now. And off of this, all we're going to do is just simply a line trace to basically see if we hit something uh, that can implement the interface and that we can interact with. Okay, so we'll do a line trace by channel. Okay, now for the start, we're going to use our camera. Okay, so we'll get our camera. I'm going to say get world location. Okay, and we'll just simply plug that straight into start as our start. Then for the end, what we're going to do is take our camera and we're going to get its forward vector, which is essentially you know the forward direction that the camera is facing. Okay, from there, we're going to um, say vector plus vector, um, but I guess first we're going to take get forward vector and we're going to multiply it by float. So we'll say vector times float, and this will be how long we want our trace to be, like how, how far into the world we can try to interact with something. So by default, I'm going to say something like maybe 300 units, okay, and we'll promote this to a variable, and we'll call it trace length. Uh, just so that it's more easy to, or easier to, um, you know, change whatever that value is. Then we'll take the resulting vector and plug it into this addition, and then we'll take that, plug it into end, and we're good to go. Uh, for trace channel, we'll go with visibility for now. Uh, we might need to change that later; just depends. And then draw debug type. We're going to make this for duration, so that uh, we can see it, you know, see the debug line for now. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our return value from the trace, which basically tells us if we hit something or not. And we're going to do a branch. Okay, so if we hit something, we're going to break our hit result. Okay, and we want to take this hit actor and we want to check if it does implement interface. Okay, now the interface we want to check is BPI interact. Okay, so off of true, we'll do another branch, plug this in. Now, one thing I do want to say is that you don't technically need to do this for interfaces, um, but it's better practice to do this, in my opinion. Um, you know, just to verify that the object you're testing against, you know, does implement the interface. Uh, because if it doesn't, then you don't even need to call the next, you know, the next function we're going to call. Uh, so basically, if it does implement the interface, then we're going to come out and say interaction, and we want to call interaction message. Now, if interaction message doesn't show up just untick context sensitive and then look for it, okay? So just to be clear, you don't want an interface call, okay? And you don't want just a normal interaction uh, function call, okay? So it has to be the message one. All right, plug that in. And now what that will do is when we press interact or F, it will do a line trace 300 units 
into the uh, you know into the world. Okay, so 300 units. And if we hit something, it'll check if it implements that interact interface, and then it'll call interaction. Okay. So what we're going to do now is come out to blueprints, go into inventory, and this time actors, and we're going to open up this world item. Now in here, uh, just for right now, you know, just for like testing purposes, because uh, we'll probably change this later, I'm going to add a static mesh. All right. And we're going to make this a cube. Okay and I'm going to choose shape cube. So just something to be aware of is that I do have the starter content enabled. So that's where I get this shape cube from. If you don't have this, just choose like the one meter cube. Um, either way, it, it works just fine. Okay, so it should look something like this right now. All right, and what we're going to do is go into our class settings now, and we're going to come under interfaces and go to uh, add a new interface. And we're going to add the BPI interact, hit compile. That's very important, make sure you compile. And I'm going to come in here to our event graph. Uh, I'm going to get rid of everything here. Yeah, we'll just get rid of everything. And now we're going to right click and type event interaction. Okay, so we want event interaction. Don't do the interact, okay? Um, just event interaction. So what this does is when our character, you know, sends out this line trace and hits something that implements the interface, it will call interaction. And so our item will receive that event and then we can execute whatever kind of functionality we want. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, actually, okay, so I think, yeah, we will make one little change here. Let's come back out to Blueprints. Let's go into Interfaces, Interact, and we're going to take this interaction function and we're going to add an input to it. We're going to change this to our survival character and choose Reference. Uh, and we're going to do this just so it's easier to communicate between the world item and our character, okay? So we'll just call this character ref for character reference. Okay. Compile and save. We'll go back to our survival character now really quick. And for character ref, we'll just type self. And we'll say get reference to self. And uh, just tick context sensitive again. That'll make it uh, more um, easier to find. All right. So compile and save that. Now we can come into our world item and you'll see that we have this now. So what we want to do is we want to get our inventory okay um, and we want to say add item BP underscore inventory okay and plug that in okay so now for these next two what we'll do is uh, we'll promote these to variables so that we can edit them on like a you know a, um, a case by case basis or like you know each each class each instance of this class can have its own uh, specific item that it adds so we'll right click promote this to a variable and we'll just call it um, I guess just item class, how about? And then we'll right click, promote this to a variable just called amount to add. Can we do that? Yeah, we'll call it amount to add. Okay, so we'll compile and save that. And then what we'll do here is we'll take this just for debugging purposes. We'll do a branch. And if it's true, all right, so if we successfully added the item, we'll do a print string that says added item woohoo otherwise off of false we'll do a print string that says failed to add item okay and let's go ahead and change up the colors of these so that's easier for our debugging we'll make the uh, false one red and we'll make our true one green how about okay so there we go, we have our debugging. I think we're ready to test this out. Um, the only last thing, let's just make sure that we set these values really quick. So we'll take our item class and let's go ahead and create our first uh, kind of child class. Okay, so what we'll do is come into our inventory folder, go into objects, and let's go ahead and right click. Um, actually, no, we won't do this for now. Um, but what we will do is right click on inventory item. We'll say create child blueprint class We'll call this BP underscore inven item underscore, let's call it apple, okay? Because um, that'll be, you know, simple. So I'll open this up and it's on my other screen. So here it is, okay? And all we're gonna do here is change the row name. Let's call this apple. We'll compile and save that really quick. Now what we'll do is um, come back out to blueprints We'll go into structs, 
into data tables and DT items, and we're going to add a new row. So we'll add a new row. We'll change its row name here to Apple because we just added one called Apple. And of course, make sure that the names are exactly the same, otherwise it won't find the item. Okay, now the name, call it Apple. Description, I'll call it a delicious red apple that fills you up. For image, we'll leave this blank for right now because we don't have any images. Um, amount, we'll leave this, you know, zero. Um, quality, um, yeah, we'll just leave that consumable, leave it. Can stack, however, let's make it stackable and let's make its max stack amount, how about 99? Um, can drop, yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just stick with this for right now. We're just focused on, you know, whether or not we can stack the items, okay? So we'll go ahead and close out of this for right now. Okay, so um, let's see, we'll just save everything, all right? Then we'll come back into our world item here. And for item class, we'll make this apple by default. Amount to add, we'll make this one. Okay, and this is just testing right now, okay? We will make like a separate item, you know, for the apple essentially. Um, okay, and so that's all we really have to do. Let's go ahead and test this out now. If we come back out to blueprints, go into inventory, actors, and we drag out our world item. Okay, I'll just, you know, hold alt and click the transform to drag a second one. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and press play, test this out. So if I press F, um, you can see there's the line trace being drawn. Okay, and when I hit something, right, it hits. So we'll come up to this, if I hit F, so it says that it added the item, okay, great. Now if I hit one, right, um, which prints out that debugging, we should see that in the first slot, or the first index of our inventory, that it should be an apple. So if we hit one, you see there at the bottom, it says, you know, inventory item apple, okay? Um, hopefully you guys can see that there. Um, so we can see that it's been added. Uh, the only thing, you know, it didn't like destroy itself. So let's do that really quick. We'll go to world item. So if it's successfully added, we'll say destroy actor, compile and save. And one last thing we'll do is come into our survival character. And let's see, let's make our trace length a little longer, maybe 400. Okay. And then we'll click the little drop down for the print string here off of our little debugging message. And we're going to say duration of how about five. And let's actually, we'll change this string up a little bit. So hold alt and click to break this. Um, and instead we're going to do an append. So we'll say append. What we're going to do is add a pin. So we have three pins now. We'll plug the first one in. The second one will be a colon and then a space. Okay, so colon space. And then for the last one, we will get the amount of that item, convert that to a string like so. And the reason for this is just so that we can, you know, verify that we are adding, um, you know, just more than one or, you know, adding however many that we're trying to add basically, okay? So there we have it. So if we press play now again, okay, I hit F, right? I'm doing my line traces into the world, fantastic. If I walk up to an item, hit F, I added the item successfully, awesome. And now if I hit one, you can see that it's in my inventory. Okay, so let's see if stacking works now. So if I hit F, and then I hit one again, you see now that it says apple, and there's two apples. Okay, so there we have it. Our inventory component is now working. We can add items to our inventory. You know, we can do some basic interaction stuff. Um, and yeah, so we're starting to make some great progress, I think. Um, so anyways, in the next videos, we're gonna continue on with our inventory, you know, hopefully start adding the actual interface for it, uh, you know, like the UI, um, and you know, getting in more into that. So. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.